morning, sir. Uh, morning. For the record, Brendan Miller. Uh, we've corresponded before on other files, as you might recall. Uh, uh, I'm counsel for Freedom Corp, uh, which is the uh, representatives uh, the, of the protesters that were in Ottawa uh, in January and February. Uh, nothing to do uh, with the border, sir. So I, I just wanted to uh, you know, get out some of the information uh, with respect to the information that you gather uh, internationally and that is given to uh, the CBSA, if you don't mind. So if you uh, can turn uh, your mind to that. So uh, Canada, of course, is a part of what they call the five eyes. Um, can you sort of give an explanation of that for the, the folks at home? Well, the five eyes is Canada, the United States, Australia, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom. And it's a term that's been used to the allied relationship since World War II. Right, and in the uh, uh, five eyes group and everything, a lot of the information that is gathered by the five eyes is, is uh, provided to the CBSA for security purposes. Is that fair? Yes. Right. And so, and of course, the Five Eyes, the United States, uh, you, you get information from uh, the agencies in the United States about any sort of uh, threats that may exist both for Canada, but also for the United States. And that's essentially put into uh, the CBSA's uh, information bank and so that you have it uh, with respect to people coming across the border. Is that fair? If the information is relevant to the border, yes. Right. And it's fair to say that throughout the protest, and at least based on the disclosure, the agencies in the United States, such as the FBI, et cetera, uh, they did not provide the CBSA or the Five Eyes any form of information with respect to any threat to Canada. Is that fair? I wouldn't be aware of that exactly. I think you'd probably better talk to those uh, like um, communication security establishment and or CSIS to right. find that out. Right, but it, nothing to, uh, was brought to your attention as the president of the CBSA uh, with respect to any for, sort of threat to Canada coming from the United States during the protests. Is that fair? That's correct. Right. And so, of course, you never relayed such information uh, to cabinet or to any of the political executive because you weren't given any. I believe that to be true, yes. Right. And uh, just to be clear, and I think my friend has made this clear at no time, uh, did you advise Cabinet or provide information to Cabinet that there existed a Section 2 CSIS Act threat under the CSIS Act? Is that fair? It wouldn't have been my purview to refer to a CSIS Act threat. Right. And so is it within, and we keep hearing that, we haven't had CSIS uh, testify yet, all of the law enforcement agencies that have testified to date have said that that purview was solely up to CSIS. Is that your understanding of how it works? That's correct. Right. So, and if CSIS is the only agency providing that information, and CSIS says there's no Section 2 Security Act threat, is it fair to say that Cabinet would have been never advised of any Section 2 CSIS Act threat? You'd have to talk to the director of CSIS about that. When you were present, when you were uh, dealing with the IRG, is it fair to say that uh, no law enforcement agency, no intelligence agency uh, within Canada advised the government that there was a Section 2 CSIS Act threat? Again, you'd have to talk to the director of CSIS about that. Right. And during your dealings uh, with the political executive, um, essentially they have been stating in public that law enforcement agencies advised them that the threshold for invoking the act was met. All right? What law enforcement agency advised them of that to your knowledge? I not aware of uh, who may have provided that advice. Right, neither are we. Thank you. Okay, next I